Hello there my lovelies, welcome to Erica's Magical Projects. I'm Erica and each week I'm going to try and bring a bit more magic into my life using handmade items and ritual practices. This week I'll be making some custom yarn. Look what's just come through the post, it's an enormous box of fluff. It's an unboxing video. So let's dive right in. <laughs> it's such a huge box I've never ordered this much from the world of wool before. So this is where I've ordered all my wool from, the world of world of wool. They have a huge warehouse in Yorkshire which I would absolutely love to go and visit but it's, at, it's so far away from where I live. Each box is hand packed, thank you Scotty, my order was packed by Scotty. Here's my invoice with everything clearly marked. I got 5% off because I spent over £50. And it's always so beautifully packaged in beautiful red tissue paper. Lovely. And then, oh, there's so many layers of excitement in here. Right, where shall I start? Well, first of all, I'm going to pull out the biggest, the most obvious thing here. This is what I've come to World of Wool for. This is a kilogram of toy stuffing. All those toys that I showed you in the videos before, they're all filled with this kind of stuff. But if you buy it in Hobbycraft, it's 250 grams for nearly five. This was six pounds for a kilogram, so that's a real bargain. Ha ha, so over the next couple of months, I'm gonna turn all of this into toys. And now for the really exciting things. Ah, look at that. <laughs> So one of the most amazing things about going to World of Wool is they have something called mixed botany lap waste, which is where the machine kind of gets a bit tangled up and there's a bit that they can't sell. So they package it all up and sell it in 500 gram bags and you never really know what you're going to get. I've got two of those bags in here. One of them is a vegan one, which is plant fibers, and the other one is wool. This one, ooh, this one looks like it's plant fibers. Some nice shiny blue there. Oh, there's some lovely blue. That's lovely. The nice thing about getting the wool lap waist is you get other people's colour combinations. That's something that somebody has put together on their big wool mixing machine for their custom blend. And uh, I've got a big, bit of somebody else's colourway, which I absolutely love. Sometimes I just spin those up just as they are, and they're quite exciting. But all of this will get mixed up into future colours. Another of their in-house products is recycled sari silk. I'm not sure how they make it. In my mind, they've got huge, teethy, peggy, comey things pulling apart saris, and this is the result. Uh, I've got 200 grams of cauldron colourway, which is a dark, um, that's black with green specks, which is absolutely perfect for this project. This is called Royal Robe. Gorgeous. Sari silk technicolour. Lovely. I really appreciate that they all come nicely labelled. The bags are moth proof. I like to use these, they're really sturdy. The next big packages will be my black. This is the this base layer for the poncho colours. Um, I've got 300 grams of merino raven and a carded black J Jacob there. Uh, I'm gonna, so that's a super, super soft long fibre and that's a more durable, it's still a fine fibre, but it's not as fine as merino. Um, I'm gonna mix those two together for the basis of the majority of the cape. So that's the black colour. In between the black, the blackness there, is my browns, lots of dark, chocolatey, hazelnutty browns. And some greens. This one is for a different project altogether. It's a fake cashmere top. Um, a very fine and fluffy, I mean it is plastic, but I'm making a shawl out of it and if it takes some colour, I want to dye it rainbow colours and it's going to really take the colour well. And finally, 300 grams of their pre-mixed uh, merino blends. I absolutely love these. They spin right up and look really beautiful. So now the next thing to do is to get making some Rolex and spin up some yarn. I've been through some of my wool stash and I've come up with lots of colours that might possibly go with this very dark brown and black theme that I'm going to go for. This is far too bright, but look, there's a couple of colours here. And I've started on the first yarn. As soon as I get the fluff out, Hexy wants to come and sit in it. So I've started with the first yarn um, I've made some Rolags with. 
So each one of these yards is going to be inspired by something wild and wonderful. These particular rolags are inspired by the granite tours on Dartmoor with the moss growing on them. Now these rolags are being made up into this yarn. This is going to be the lightest yarn in the poncho and this is going to be about where everything else is going to fall along this colourway. This one is really a test yarn, the first one. I wanted to see how the row lags spun up. I wanted to see if this construction method would hold up. I think single ply is the way to go. And I love, I love this yarn. One of the fibres I'm going to put into this poncho is some beautiful alpaca locks. Now I got this fresh from the alpaca, so it's still in lock form. And the first thing I'll have to do is pick through this alpaca and give it a good old card and get all the fibres lying in the right direction. And then I end up with something like this. Then I'm going to blend these three fibres together. This is Sari Silk, this is Merino and the alpaca on my carders and then make a little row lag. And then make quite a lot more row lags after that. <laughs> and then they're ready to spin up into a nice chunky single ply yarn. Some of this yarn has a bit of sari silk poking through and some hasn't. I've mixed up the colourways, green, black, brown and grey, and I'm hoping to really invoke that kind of Dartmoor feel along with the Dartmoor fluff. I've spun and I've spun and I've spun and I've spun until all of that fluff has been turned into yarn. The summer sunshine has been so kind to me, I've been able to wash it and dry it pretty quickly. So this stuff has been out on my line drying away. And there's three more yarns for the poncho. Two art yarns, one with locks and one with coils. I'm really hoping the weather will stay nice so that I can get the rest of those yarns washed and dried this week and then I can start working on turning it into the poncho. And the last thing I've got to do in this particular section of the project is to work out which hook I'm going to use. After it's washed the yarn has fluffed up beautifully to create this quite thick and sturdy single ply. I'm really looking forward to crocheting with it and I'm wondering which one of my hooks am I going to be using. I'm going to make a little square of triple crochets just to see how they all look and I'm going to start with the thickest and the fluffiest of the yarn which is this dark brown one and first I'll have to turn it into a cake. The first two rows are with a 6.5 hook, the second two rows are with my 7 hook, and the third with the 8. Which one is going to be the most effective tool for this fabric? We've got the big chunky effect here at this end, and it also lets the yarn fluff up a little bit. 
but I quite like this tight texture here. Mm, of course, there's the halfway seven. Maybe the halfway seven actually gives it a little bit of both. I love all the textures with each of the three different hooks. But I think the one I'm going to go for is the seven, which has kind of got qualities of both of the tighter, sturdier fabric, and then it also allows the yarn to fluff up a little bit. So the seven hook it's going to be. It's chunky, soft, and authentically Neolithic. I can imagine my ancestors were wearing quite a lot of clothes made from very rough spun, homespun yarn like this. Well, thank you very much for joining me this week for my unboxing. Join me next week when I'll be exploring the joys of downloading patterns off Ravelry. But before I go, I'm going to give a little shout out to Seb, my nephew, who's been following me from the very start. And thank you to everybody else who's supporting me. Your kind words really do mean an awful lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget that everything handmade is magical.